Hello everyone, my name is Skylar D'Angelo and today I'm going to talk to you about the development and implementation of radiation payloads in NASA's OSDR. So the OSDR is the Open Science Data Repository, which publishes scientific data from NASA's primarily space biology funded grants. It has three main contributors, Ames Life Science Data Archive, Gene Lab, the NASA Biological Institutional Scientific Collection. More information about these contributors can be found on the OSDR About pages. We aim to implement FAIR data principles to make data more findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. We do this by ensuring that our data is uniquely identified, following open protocols, implementing widely adopted vocabularies, and by describing data in a way that it can be replicated. Metadata is data about data. Examples from this publication would be the date published, payload, and subject. Metadata is important because it makes data more accessible, so it's easier to find, use, and is more widely available, as well as making data more reproducible, so it provides details on how studies can be reproduced and how data can be reused. While we feature a number of spaceflight studies, a large portion of OSDR studies are ground-based. Currently, we have limitations that can make it difficult at times to find relevant ground studies. For instance, a spaceflight mission may be tagged with payloads like rodent research, but regardless of the content of a ground study, whether that be looking at altered gravity, radiation, or environmental conditions, will be tagged with the same payload ground too. Payload traditionally refers to specific data producing elements on a spaceflight mission. However, we've co-opted this term to group together studies to make them more searchable. Here's a list of the new ground payloads we're currently implementing. This summer, we looked at a total of 195 studies, 23 of which did not have an applicable payload out of this list. And to take a moment to emphasize the work of summer interns on this project, I personally assigned payloads to 121 of these studies. For my talk, I'm primarily going to focus on radiation payloads. 86 of the 195 ground studies utilized radiation. And after discussing with subject matter expert Dr. Jack Miller, we decided that the payloads could be used to categorize and improve the current search function of the radiation ground studies. We consulted with him to decide which payloads would be best based on the information users seeking radiation studies would need, such as dose categories, linear energy transfer, and more. And to clarify why we chose these specific radiation payloads, I want to give a brief summary of space radiation. Space radiation puts astronauts at an increased risk for radiation sickness, central nervous system effects, and an overall lifetime increased risk of cancer. Future missions intend to leave low Earth orbit, which means we're leaving the protection of both Earth's atmosphere, which protects us from X-rays and gamma rays, as well as Earth's magnetic field, which shields us from cosmic rays and charged solar particles. Already, we see that leaving low Earth orbit is more dangerous for astronauts, as Apollo astronauts who reached lunar orbit were significantly more likely to die from cardiovascular disease than astronauts who never left low Earth orbit or never flew. The life science studies in our repository are primarily focused on ionizing radiation, which poses a greater threat to biological organisms directly compared to non-ionizing radiation. The most common radiation payload we had was high-dose radiation, with a total of 68 studies having this payload. And the most common radiation type was gamma radiation with 47 studies having this payload. Many studies have multiple radiation payloads as well. In order to understand why we chose these categories, I'm going to walk us through an example study that was assigned some of these payloads. When we curate metadata, we are tasked with extracting relevant information from these studies. So if we look in the ionizing radiation column, we see that we have cesium-137, which is used in gamma radiation, oxygen-16, which is a heavy ion, and proton radiation. So we pull out these three payloads. Since there are multiple different types of radiation, we add an additional payload called multiple radiation types. We also see in the linear energy transfer column that we have both a low and high LET. If we look at the absorbed radiation dose column, we have 0.1 gray, which is low dose, all the way up to 3 gray, which is considered high dose radiation. This may seem like a lot of payloads for just one study, but there are different characteristics to space radiation that researchers might want to access separately. Overall, I want to leave you with the idea that metadata is important because it makes data more accessible. Currently, we've assigned new payloads to over 160 studies in the Open Science Data Repository. In that process, we've also drafted payload and hardware pages. We're in the process of adding hardware pages with the goal of giving users more information about types of hardware used in ground studies, since that information is not always readily available to those outside of NASA. I wanted to give a special thank you to Dr. Rachel Gilbert, who's mentored me on this project, NASA ALSDA, as well as Blue Marble Space Institute of Science's Young Scientist Program for giving me the opportunity to intern with you this summer. Thank you.